And now our final uh, short talk uh, this morning is uh, by Ellen Robson. Uh, and Ellen's going to be talking about slope stability in lower income countries. Good afternoon, everyone. So I'm a geotechnical engineer and I'm interested in um, developing tools and guidelines that can be used by engineers in lower income countries to improve the stability of slopes. This picture was taken along uh, during my field work in 2019 in Nepal. It's in the Makwanpur district just south of Kathmandu. So in this picture you can see there are many slope stability problems. Um, and I'm going to use this image to talk through the research that I've previously done and I'm planning to do on tackling these slope stability issues. So firstly, I'd like to draw your attention to this part of the image where you can see that a road has been cut into the hill slope. So this road connects two key towns um, and in 2019 during the monsoon season it was blocked for 14 days due to uh, slope failures along the road um, and this meant that people couldn't access services um, like hospitals and schools um, and also delayed the transport of goods. When the road is blocked, um, a team of engineers have to come and clear the debris and remediate the slope, which is hugely costly as well. And this is a situation that occurs throughout Nepal every monsoon season um, after periods of heavy rain. These are some photos that I also took during my field work in 2019, so showing some of these other slope stability problems. Luckily, um, in this situation, there was no fatalities, but in, this is the reality in a lot of slope failures in, in Nepal. So the first bit of research that I undertook during my PhD was to understand the human factors for causing these slope stability um, problems along roads. To do so, I interviewed multiple stakeholders in road slope stabilisation um, and found that there was poor communication between the stakeholders themselves. And fundamentally, I found that slope stabilisation just wasn't prioritised in road construction projects. So now I'm going to show you a close-up of this, um, of the road. Um, in constructing a road, um, a, a slope has to be cut um, that is at a steeper inclination than the natural hill slope. Um, generally, the um, gentler a hill slope, the more stable it is. However, excavating a gentle slope um, require, is more costly. So um, in building a road slope, there is a trade-off between the, the cost and also the stability. For engineers to decide what inclination to use, they often use guidelines such as these. These are from the Department of Roads manual from the government of Nepal. Um, so if an engineer was going to use these and they were looking at a, um, a sand that was a, a cut height of five to 10 meters, they would recommend a gradient of one to one to one to 1.2. But as you can see, these are not very detailed. They only include hard rock, soft rock, and soil. There's no descriptions for an engineer to determine what category um, their slope should be in. Um, and these weren't based on any rigor rigorous stability analyses. So a, some research that I've undertaken is to um, develop a methodology to develop a set of road cutting guidelines. Now I've done this for Nepal, so I characterised rocks in Nepal based on their geotechnical properties and carried out a series of numerical stability analyses to find the safe cutting angles for these. Um, and during my postdoc, I will be working with the Department of Roads in Nepal in training engineers to use these newer, um, more rigorous slope cutting guidelines. I've also had meetings with the road departments in Malaysia and in the Philippines to develop new road cutting guidelines for these countries as well. Um, so below the, this um, road, you can see that a gabion wall has been implemented. Gabion walls and mortar masonry walls are implemented along roads throughout Nepal um, to stabilise the slopes. 
Um, through talking with local people, I found that they were often implemented but then would fail during the following monsoon season. And this led me to a question, how much money was lost through this cycle of implementation and then failure? So I developed a um, cost analysis methodology that was suitable to be used in a lower income country setting. Um, and this is something I want to test further during my postdoc by carry, conducting it on um, different case studies. So finally, I'll draw your attention over to this side of the image where you can see that there's a threat of a natural landslide. And during my postdoc, I'll also be working on reviewing policy documents and guidelines on natural landslides um, in countries in Southeast Asia. So this is kind of a summary of the, the projects that I've taken you through that I'll be working on in my um, postdoc today. So thank you for listening. <laughs>